So let's begin with the fact that Donald Trump's public persona prior to this election was consecrated and constructed by one of the most powerful media organizations in the world, if not the most powerful media organization in the world, which is NBC News, which or NBC, rather, which for many, many years paraded Donald Trump in the format of a reality TV program watched by tens of millions of Americans that portrayed him as the embodiment of the entrepreneurial spirit. He marched into boardrooms in charge and unflinchingly fired people who weren't working up to standard performance. He built new businesses. He he was the embodiment of everything that Americans are taught to revere. And, and this is the person who for decades has been a racist, a demagogue, a con artist, and yet NBC turned him into this swaggering hero at great profit to itself. And so, already, he was a byproduct of, of media worship. And then, once the campaign began, the media, as you said, nonstop fed on Donald Trump, to the exclusion, certainly, first and foremost, of Bernie Sanders, but even to the other candidates, who got far less TV time than Trump did because he was a ratings goldmine. And, and they would literally wait on the tarmac and excitingly and breath, breathlessly um, show his plane about to land. And this built up this image on, in Americans' minds that Donald Trump was this all-consuming, towering new presence on the American political landscape. And the American media did a, a critical job in building him up during the primary and entrenching in the minds of Americans that he was not this out-of-the-norm, radical, extreme dangerous, racist, authoritarian that he was, but instead was this new and powerful figure who was going to come and revolutionize American politics and the American political culture that so many citizens of the United States have come to despise. And I think that what you just contrasted in terms of how Trump was treated and how Sanders was treated shows a really important truth about how media operates, which is, if you talk to most journalists who work at major media outlets or newspapers, as you know, and you say to them, you have all kinds of ways that you censor certain opinions, that you have of excluding certain viewpoints, they'll insist that that's not true, that they never um, are told what to show or not to show, they're never told what to say or not to say, and of course that's true. And yet embedded within all of their editorial judgments about who is worth hearing from and who isn't worth hearing from are all kinds of ideological and partisan biases. So the idea that Donald Trump, the billionaire, celebrity TV star, should constantly be heard from whereas Bernie Sanders, the old Jewish socialist from Vermont, who nobody took seriously, doesn't need to be heard from with all of his um, boring speeches about college debt and, and um, health care and the like. In that choice is a very strong and pedantic ideological choice that the American media embraced and played a huge role um, in enabling Trump to march their primary. Now, the only other point I want to add to this media issue is that I do think that media behavior changed fundamentally with regard to Donald Trump once he became the nominee. So you have the primary period where they treated him like a normal candidate, they, they revered him, they gave him endless free t TV time. But once he became the nominee, and they took seriously the prospect that he might be president, and they started to realize and internalize the responsibility they bore for enabling him to get that far, I think they went all the way to the other extreme, where they completely united in this kind of mission of destroying Donald Trump, of preventing his victory, and ensuring that Hillary Clinton was elected. And in a big way, that also played a role, unwittingly, I think, in helping Trump, because of all the institutions in the United States, the institutions of authority that are hated, the American media leads the way. And so when people saw the media basically trying to coerce them or dictate to them that they should turn their backs on Donald Trump, that they should vote for Hillary Clinton. I think a backlash ensued where people believed that the media was being unfair and were not going to take marching orders from these media institutions that they also have come to regard as fundamentally corrupt. And unwittingly, I think that played a, a, an important role as well in, in ensuring that he could win.